Back in 2011, when I switched to Reaper permanently from Pro Tools, one of the things I missed was the Sansamp PSA1 plugin. This plugin was Pro Tools only. It was great on bass and drums and synths and all kinds of things. One of my most used kind of secret weapon plugins in Pro Tools, and it's an emulation of the rack mount uh, Tech 21 PSA1. At the time, there were no other plugins doing an emulation of this uh, product. I actually owned a pedal version of the Sans Amp, but it was completely different. And since then, I bought other bass distortion pedals like the MXR uh, M80. Again, completely different, great sounds, but completely different. And it's it wasn't something I could easily use on drums and such. But now things are a bit different, and there's actually plugins that do that kind of sound. And so in this video, we're going to look at one of them that is unfortunately Windows only, but it seems to be a great option. Let's check it out. So the plugin we're looking at today is Softamp PSA. It's Windows only. It actually came out in 2016. At that time, I was on a Mac, and uh, only recently I've, uh, have I kind of switched back to Windows. And uh, so this plugin became available to me. I don't know if I saw this at the time when it came out, but I didn't have a PC to actually try it. So it kind of went off my radar and uh, forgot about it. There's another option that is cross-platform, and that's the Nimbrini Audio PSA 1000. They have two different versions. They've got a, like a stereo one where it's completely separate controls for the left and right, plus it has mid-side controls and things like that. Um, and then the, the junior version, which is very much like this one or like the rack mount or the original plug-in version. Uh, but this one does cost money. I didn't know that it was actually on sale right now, uh, but you could get that bundle for $31. I haven't tried the demo. I don't really know much about it, but from what I've seen in reviews and things like that, it seems to be very, very similar, if not better, than the Pro Tools version. All right, so into Reaper we go. I've got a little demo project that's that's honestly not great sounding. Um, this The Sansamp plugin is not great for guitar tones. And I think you kind of have to think of it as sort of a distortion uh, box. It's something that can make something sound aggressive, distorted, trashy, grungy. Um, it's kind of a multi-effect for distortion. It has d multiple different character controls, uh, different gain stages. There's some EQ and stuff in it. It's a lot of fun, but don't think of it as a guitar amp because it's really not. It sounds great on bass, and used in parallel on drums, I think you can get some really cool results. Or even, even using it on the actual uh, drum bus, it can uh, be an interesting sort of uh, lo-fi effect. Let's hear this. I've got this on uh, kick and snare in parallel. I've got this on two guitar tracks, basically double tracked, uh, playing the same thing. And I've got it on the bass. So here we go. So I think the weakest point of this is having it on the guitars. And let's just start with that there. Um, so on the left and right guitars, I've got a compressor, I've got the soft amp PSA, and I've got a Valhalla Supermassive. And so let's just go through some of the tones here, um, I guess with this soloed in the center. Going through the interface here, we've got a preamp section. Um, these, this kind of mark on the plugin is the Unity position. And if you double click a knob, that's going to reset back there. And that's the same as on the hardware. You can see these markings for that. 
Um, any of the controls, if you want to learn more about the controls, is going to be the same as the hardware version. Uh, and you can find the manual on the website. But yeah, so the preamp is kind of the first gain stage, and it pushes into the next three stages of distortion. So there's a low, mid, and high distortion um, position uh, controls, character knobs, they call them. And there's an overall drive control. And the drive control and the preamp control, they all kind of sound different. I kind of like to think of the preamp as kind of like a distortion pedal before the multiband distortion. We've got a low, mid, and high uh, distortion. And the unity position for the crunch is actually down at the, the bottom. So it's kind of interesting. It's almost like um, the preamp section has a low and high split. And then the crunch is, is blending in some of the original signal or distorting a, a, a split of the original signal. It's, I don't quite understand the, the actual signal flow that makes it sound the way it does. In the speaker sim section, there is, um, you can kind of see the pre-EQ with the yellow line and the post-EQ with the red line. As you adjust the drive knobs and things like that, you can see that in the graph where that changes or what it affects, whether it's the input or the output sort of stages um, before distortion and after distortion. And the speaker sim shape and roll off really changes the sounds and is worth trying out. So let's play this again. So you can get some really trashy, ratty, grungy, distorted tones with this. But if you're looking for a realistic uh, guitar sound, I don't think you're going to find it. Moving on, let's look at the bass. This is one of my favorite applications for this. Let's hear the bass um, just with a bit of compression on it. This is a Stingray bass with the bass control turned up. Uh, in the preamp, and uh, the highs turned up a little bit, not quite full. I tend to record anything like that through that bass. Uh, it's finger-picked. Um, my fingernails are a bit long today, uh, so there's a little bit of a kind of gross click. But that's okay because we're going to completely destroy it using the plugin. Here are the bass settings that I'm using, and let's try some different things like pushing the preamp control versus pushing the drive control. The preamp stage seems to push the other distortion stages in a different way than using the drive control. You can have the drive control all the way down and still get distortion. You can have the preamp all the way down and push the drive control and you still get quite a lot of distortion. So just kind of think of them as different characters, different colors that you can use. And then the low and high EQs are actually pretty extreme. I'll have to look at the this. I think it's, you can boost or cut by 12 dB. So it's a pretty extreme EQ. And let's go over to the speaker sim section and play around with the controls with the shape and the roll off. Let's move on from there and look at a technique that Chad Blake uses quite a lot, which is sending the kick and the snares to Sansamp plugins or hardware and then blending them in. And when you're using them in parallel, you have to be careful of the phase control or the polarity on the tracks. So I have my kicks here. And with these settings, I find that I have to invert the polarity to get anything that kind of works. 
So let's hear this soloed. And without the plugin. So a huge difference. I'm actually using the gate and the compressor on this, and I'll show you what that's like without. So the compressor kind of inflates it. it. It fills out the tail section of it a lot. And then the denoiser section I'm using as a gate, trimming that down. So I'm getting a lot more body by using the compressor, but then I'm uh, shortening the actual sound. Now I'm actually sending uh, three kicks to that. So I've got a kick in, a kick out, and a kick sub. So here's the three kicks together without the sans amp. and with the sans amp. Much more of an interesting sound. And here it is with the polarity uh, inverted or normaled, not adjusted for with the plugin. So this is something you definitely have to keep an eye on. And if you're doing EQ, like cutting out the lows, um, you might end up with a different um, position for the polarity control. With the snare, I'm just sending the snare top. I didn't like how it sounded with the snare bottom. And with the sans amp. And the sans amp on its own. Adding in this kind of like aggressive edge to it. So if there's any ring in that snare, it's going to be extended. You can try to use the gate to reduce that or, or put in a gate before it, that sort of thing. Let's hear the drum kit. And then without the sans amp. So obviously it's a pretty extreme effect and you won't be using that on every project, but for hard rock stuff, industrial stuff, electronic music, you might be able to fit this kind of thing in. So there you go, a demo of the Soft Amp PSA. It's a free plugin for Windows. If you want another option that will work in Reaper, there's the Nimbrini Audio uh, PSA 1000. It's about $30 for that. And yeah, and, and kind of just an overview of uh, using the Sans Amp type plugin or the Sans Amp rack in a mix for distortion effects. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.